Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. A lot has changed in the last one month, not just for the Calgary real estate market, but also the macroeconomic situation for Canada and US. A lot of data has come out on both sides. And as far as inflation goes, it's a little bit more sticky on the Canada side. Uh, US seems to be doing a whole lot better at around 3%. And even as far as the economy data comes out, um, jobs and everything seems to be looking way better on GDP and everything else for the US. Canada is significantly lagging behind as far as GDP per capita and a lot of um, unemployment growth and everything else. So, of course, Canada's economy does seem a little bit more on the edge versus U.S. seems to be headed well for recovery. However, there are two main groups of people right now, and that's where the market is split. There's a group of people that think that we're headed straight for a recession. The Fed's done too little too late. And they've taken too long to take to have interest rate cuts. Bank of Canada has already started seeing interest rate cuts. If you watched my last video, you understand that a lot more uh, interest rate cuts are required. And after I launched that video, news outlets and investors and the market and everyone is actually now starting to price in even more rate cuts than we initially thought, because everyone's starting to see the trouble that is in the economy, the macro economy, the factor is not really adding up, unemployment ticking up, GDP per capita and everything else that I highlighted in that video. And so we need a lot more rate cuts to, I think soft landing is out of the picture at this point. We're still going to have a hard landing. There's still some trouble, but let's see how much we can minimize that. As far as US goes, uh, they are in a better situation overall. However, over the last one week, the stock market has taken an absolute plunge. Um, there was a bit of recovery over the last one day, but I believe that's just a temporary recovery before we see some more pain. But the stock market is entirely driven by emotions. And that's why the direct comparison, because even the real estate market is driven at the end of the day by consumer confidence, emotions, and how people feel about the market going forward and what the next one year is going to look like. All the data that we were looking at and that we were pulling in the back end prior to even getting the market reports, um, if you tuned in, you already know we were headed for a slowdown. We could see the price drops happening for properties that were already listed. People were paying below list price and properties were staying on market for longer periods of time. So the expected outcome in this month's market report is not going to be any surprise. Overall, we've seen a slowdown across all property types, a uh, drop in price for some. And this is just also the seasonal data kicking in as we head in for fall. This is just what happens around the summer uh, time. So once we get into fall, we might see a pickback up together with the interest rate cuts. And of course, we are still in a very strong seller's market although we are reaching close to now two months of supply, but that still keeps us in a very strong seller's market, especially for depending on what price range and what property types you're looking at and what areas you're looking at. So there's still a lot of areas that are still seeing appreciation, but the euphoria from some parts of the market have essentially died out. And that's just what's expected around this time while people wait on the sidelines. It seems like consumer confidence is coming down and just trading sideways and there's a lot of volatility in the market which is also reflected in what's happening in the stocks and so going forward there's a lot of opportunities for investors and as more and more inventory comes on the market and we're going to take a look at what property types could be best suited for you depending on your goals and what you're looking for before we get started hey guys it's ash i your calgary realtor and this video is all about data everything that's happening in the Calgary real estate market. This channel covers anything and everything to keep you updated so that you are more proactive in the market versus reactive and just following everyone after the data comes out. Uh, we do a lot of research on the back end and I try to provide that to you as soon as I can. And so if you like that kind of thing, definitely subscribe and I would love to see you in future videos. So first off, just to analyze what's happening in the economy overall, because of course that affects the market sentiment and how buyers and sellers feel about the market. Right here we can see the Taylor rule. So the Taylor rule actually is something that is used to predict where we should be, whether we are too restrictive or too loose with our monetary policies. And this is for the US Fed which has a direct impact on how the Canada economy and rate cuts and everything is going to perform. So as you can see here right now, we are 1.7 points over where should we should actually be. And this is why a lot of people are essentially predicting that the 
feds should have first of all already done their rate cuts in july but if not they're 100 percent going to do something in august and we saw this by the last fed chairman meeting uh where papa jerome powell he already announced that the certainty for a rate cut in august and september is very very high and that was for september but people are saying in august itself we should see a rate cut and then a couple of them after and they're going to drop rapidly so this is where it's uh, important to keep an eye on this kind of data because the environment is going to change so fast if we are delayed on the rate cuts essentially when they come they're going to be consecutive every single month and that's what canada has done initially the prediction is that we were going to do interest rate cuts every alternate month but now Canada has done two rate cuts in uh, two consecutive months and the idea is that heading into uh, August, September, October instead of August and October uh, the rate cuts should be in August and September as two consecutive rate cuts again and in fact we are even pricing 50 basis points or 75 basis points by the end of the year instead of just 25 basis points more so definitely uh, a lot more pressures coming into the market to ease us into better economic conditions as other factors start worsening. Right here we can see the consumer confidence and this is extremely important because it gives you an idea of where the market sits at and how they feel about um, the recession fears and everything. As you can see from the start of 2024 we saw a sharp decline but then we started rising back up and now since then we've just been heading sideways and since 2023 overall the trend lines also been mostly sideways so this is it's good that it's not uh we, we've seen a recovery essentially in 2024 and we're heading sideways but it's not good in terms of there's still not enough optimism in the market to drive us out of the economy so people are just being patient they're waiting on the sidelines waiting to see what happens with interest rates and um this is where while in this all happens and if inventory buildup happens you have way more options so when i get buyers asking me why should i come into the market this time you need to keep an eye on the bigger picture you don't want to be coming onto the market when everyone else comes to the market right now with the inventory buildup if your perspective is five to ten years you don't really care about the tiny fluctuations that's going to happen over the next six months to a year and so that's where there are a lot of good opportunities because now you can take your time and browse and look for the properties that you actually want as well as for sellers um, depending on what your time horizon was if you were looking to buy or sell if you were looking to sell essentially in the short term so in the next one year and you don't want to risk your equity and you want to maximize on where the market's at right now after all the growth that we've seen over the last two three years then you might want to sell now versus if you want to hold that property for five years or more anyway then it doesn't really matter to you so taking a look at the q2 economy factors this gives a lot of perspective into how things are changing on the macro scale so right over here you can see that the alberta population year over year has grown by 4.41 percent however the interprovincial migration has actually dropped by 10.4 percent so a huge contribution of why we were seeing all those price growths were into provincial migration so overall population growth is still growing but no longer at the pace that we were seeing in the last two years and international migration has still continued going up by 4.85 percent contributing to that population growth so now there's that shift of instead of inter inter provincial migration we are seeing international migration of people coming straight to alberta instead of going to ontario or vancouver apart from that we've seen a good increase in housing starts so that means a lot more inventory is going to be coming into the market over the next six months one year and two years so in terms of detached properties, we saw an increase of 33%, semi-detached 34%, row townhouses 15%, apartments 50%. So all of that is going to bring a lot of good inventory on the market and help us stabilize prices at where we are at right now. This is definitely not enough still for the population growth. And so I don't think this is going to cause a decline in prices, but it will stabilize because we've essentially seen three years of growth now. And I think that's what we would expect for any given cycle we've seen three years of growth and now we should see some sideways movements some correction and continue after that as far as the rental market goes it continues to go up so year over year now a two bedroom is at 2140 and i can tell you that's still a very conservative number i've seen apartments for 2300 2400 so it's a six percent year over year gain 
I'm curious if you are renting in Calgary, I'm curious to see what kind of uh, price growth or increases you've seen in terms of how much your landlords are charging you depending on the different communities and then um, that would be something to pass on to the audience into the next video um, in terms of under construction you can see in June how much was completed and then year to date what the completion is which is pretty good numbers as far as employment goes a lot of the employment is clearly happening in the part-time jobs full-time employment is not really seeing enough growth and instead, we are actually seeing a huge growth in unemployment. Um, this is not just for the Alberta province, but Canada-wide, which is why there's a lot of caution in the market with uh, people not taking as much risks anymore. And they are not seeing those bidding wars, multiple offers, or uh, unconditional sales, uh, even though there's still high sales activity, but it's not as frantic as it was in the spring months. At the same time, the Canada bond yields have been falling drastically. And so what we can expect is the fixed rates to drop pretty soon, allowing a lot of uh, long-term buyers to then now start getting back into the market. Uh, moving on from the economy data and macroeconomy, now actually focusing on what really happened in the Calgary real estate market over the last one month and where I see things going. Taking a look at the summary, uh, just going over the highlighted points, with 2,380 sales and 3,604 listings, the sales to new listings ratio fell to 66%. And this is dramatically different from where we used to be. We used to be around the 84, 85% mark uh, just last year. And so this is significant improvement. Inventories rose from 4,158 units, still 33% below what we typically see in July. And this 33% in comparison is we were actually down 40% from the longer term average. So now we're just 33% below. So not too far off, but still overall, we are relatively in still tighter inventory, but we are seeing more and more houses come on the market, especially for certain price ranges. So I only expect this number to continue to improve. Majority of supply growth occurred for homes priced above 600,000. The rise has helped shift the market away from the extreme seller market conditions experienced during the spring. So spring was entirely focused on that affordable part of the market. And now we're seeing a shift away as people realize that now most properties are shifting over across that benchmark price. So 600,000 for detached above that is still 600,000 is still now considered cheap actually in uh, Calgary. Uh, most properties are around the 800 to a million dollar range and that's pretty normal for the market. And so sales are now starting to pick back up on that side of the market. And eventually what I expect is as more and more tensions build up on the more expensive side of the market, that will have a trickle down effect then to other property types. And so that will end up happening then to semi-detached townhouses and apartments after that. So that's what I expect for the next six months to a year. Sales eased by 10% over the last year's record. And the pullback in sales has been driven primarily by homes priced below 600,000. So again, same thing, lesser people buying uh, homes below 600,000. So lack of affordability as more and more properties cross over that threshold. Months of supply now rose to 1.8 months. As far as overall benchmark price, um, the overall doesn't really matter because it's a mix of everything, but just to say where it's at, it's at 606,700, which is a drop of $1,300 month over month. Year over year, it's a 7.7% gain. Detached price is at 767,800, a drop of just $200, so doesn't matter. It's mostly a sideways movement. Semi-detached is at 687,900, an increase of $1,800 month over month. The townhouse prices uh, are at 464,200, which dropped by 400. Again, doesn't really matter. It's more of a sideways movement. Apartments, 346,300, so that rose by 1,600. So as you can see, certain parts of the market still see continued tensions versus other parts are easing out and seeing a bit of slowdown if you want to consider that. I feel going forward, at least for the next one, two months, you're still going to get a bit of a sideways movement before we head into fall. In fall, you're going to get more buyers coming to the market. Potentially, this is early signaling of where those buyers are going to be. They're going to probably going to be at those more expensive parts of the market as we see a rise of inventory 
on those parts of the market now because initially when we saw an inventory rise in the more expensive part of the market it was not the most appealing properties but now more and more sellers are coming on the market and so those appeal to the buyers and that's where um, the match happens as far as benchmark prices across the entire city by district you can see not overall we've seen a drop essentially in most parts of the market um, only the affordable parts of the market have seen continued increases so northeast increased by 3300 east increased by 2500 dollars um, and the other part that saw an increase was south at 1300 dollars everything else has pretty much seen a decline in fact the parts that saw um, significant increases or the more expensive part of the markets are actually the ones seeing the largest declines month over month. So what individual factors actually are contributing to the market shifts? So as far as sales go, you can see month over month, we have dropped by 358. New listings dropped by 194. And inventory overall increased by 371. So the drop in sales, the increase in new listings relative to a longer term average and also last year, has resulted in higher inventory and therefore our months of supply initially just two months ago we were at 1.1 we went to 1.38 and now we are at 1.75 taking a look at individual property types and what the summary is for each of those so sales in july actually fell by eight percent as the 15 percent rise for homes priced above 600,000 was not enough to offset the 50% decline occurring in the lower price ranges. So there's a huge shortage of listings now in that affordable sector of the market. We saw a rise in the expensive part of the market only by 15%, but the affordable part of the market dropped by 50%. So year-to-date detached sales have actually eased by just over 1% compared to last year with 1,098 sales and 1,721 new listings this month, inventories actually rose to 1,950 units. That's a lot of homes. Semi-detached affordably continues to attract purchases to the semi-detached sector. Year-to-date sales actually reached 1,518 units, 6% higher than last year. So we had a good spell of six to eight months where we were not getting a whole lot of semi-detached and it was causing drop in sales drop in not much increase in prices and so now we're seeing that improve and that's causing a lot of good gains in the semi-detached part of the market growth in sales was possible thanks to this and 76 percent sales to new listings ratio and a month of supply of 1.5 months and as far as row townhouses so we've seen a gain in row new listings relative to the pullback in sales caused by sales to new listings ratio to fall to 73% this month. So the months of supply actually rose to 1.3 months. So we are seeing some easing now finally in the townhouse market. And the townhouse market was the most highly stressed part of the market because it was all the people that couldn't afford uh, the detached, not enough inventory on semi-detached, but they also don't want an apartment. So they were all forced into the road townhouse. And so now finally to see some pressures ease off is a good news for buyers. Of course, I don't think this will last too long as uh, the cascading effect from detached carries down to semi-detached townhouse and apartments. But this prevented a further monthly price gain this month. And as far as apartments go, a significant drop in the sales occurred for properties priced below 300,000. New listings in July were at 1,043 units. So sales to new listings ratio to fall below 63%, which is pretty low. And months of supply is now over two months of supply. So that is actually a significant improvement over what we've seen happening with apartments and townhouses over the past one year. So this gives you a lot of good options. Of course, now it varies depending on which uh, part of the market. It's easiest to find an apartment potentially in downtown. Um, of course, there's a lot of higher condo fee buildings there, plus also a lot of expensive ones depending on how close you get to the Bow River and all of that. Um, in other sectors of the market, you still can find pretty affordable apartments, but it's harder uh, to compete for them because there's lesser buildings in those communities. So it really depends on which part of the market you're looking at when you're looking at apartments. Overall, as you can see, the sales to new listing ratio altogether, um, the highest tension is still in semi-detached because not only now we've started getting inventory on the market, so the buyers are finally starting to buy those properties that were waiting on the sidelines or couldn't afford the other properties. As far as the easiest parts of the market is at 
apartments right now very close to detached at 63 percent and that clearly reflects in the months of supply so apartments and months of supply is now over two months whereas the months of supply for semi detached is at 1.4 and the tide still remains for row townhouses at 1.29 but we've seen a drop in sales so there's enough inventory to pick from overall looking at total sales compared to previous years so you can see the sales even though there's a drop in sales but our sales overall across different communities still pretty pretty high compared to the last two three years we are almost at par with that trend line so it's not a significant drop uh, compared to the longer term trend as far as our inventory goes we're doing a bit better now uh, with all the inventory that's come on the market we were not doing so well in the q1 q2 part but now with all the inventory that's coming on the market uh, compared to the past years of july we we're actually doing a lot better than last year not as good as 2022 of course and as far as total inventory by price range this is very important to look at because this gives you a clear idea where the market's shifting and the red lines that i put in there are compared to where we were last month so we can see the clear inventory increases are either between 300 to 400,000 so a lot of those might be apartments or older townhouses and then uh, we're seeing an increase of inventory above 700,000 so 700,000 to a million dollars and those are essentially all your expensive properties the 15 percent that we talked about earlier uh, increase in inventory that's where it's all coming from and this perfectly correlates with the data that we were seeing before now this compared to the total number of sales that we are seeing in these exact same price ranges obviously you can see the huge declines that we are seeing in 700 to a million dollar range so obviously there's a huge increase in sales that's happening there and despite that we still saw inventory increase so there's a lot of demand there there's a lot of demand in the 400 to 500,000 range um, but of course that whole affordable bubble which is between 300,000 to 600,000 also saw declines overall not as much in the 600 to 700,000 and that's just probably not enough inventory uh, so it's either people going for the more expensive part of the market now and as far as the affordable parts we're still seeing a lot of sales happen but nowhere as close to what we were seeing before and so therefore inventory gains for those parts of the market are not enough now taking a look at the months of supply and this data is extremely useful to understand individual parts of the market so right over here we can see for detached we've actually seen improvements across all areas uh, in terms of months of supply as last month only city center was above 1.5 at around 1.2 but now you can see almost half of them more than half of them are not just about 1.5 but we're also seeing a lot of them above uh two so that's a huge improvement as far as apartments go we've seen a big increase in city center and northeast as well as inventory goes so that's again very good for buyers looking in those areas some other uh, parts of the market also have come up overall but you'd still expect um, some competition potentially in east for example as far as semi-detached the data is really all over the place because some parts of the market are super easy now to get a semi-detached versus others still have very high tension so there's a big increase in west north and east as you can see here uh, significantly in fact west is above two and a half months of inventory now so if you're looking for a semi-detached in west you have no problems if you're looking for a semi-detached in east again super easy but if you're looking for a semi-detached potentially in northwest that's where you're going to face a lot of competition so the higher it is the easier it is to find a property in that quadrant um, the lower it is the harder it is uh, as far as row townhouses we've seen a big increase in city center everything else is pretty much very close to where we were last month now benchmark again across the same different segments and this is one of my favorite graphs especially for buyers but also gives the sellers a good idea of where your property is being priced at and now keep in mind this is just a benchmark price so it's based on the average property type in that area if you have more bedrooms more bathrooms or different upgrades your pricing is obviously going to be different but this pretty much covers most properties and gives you a good starting point so for buyers i love this because you can easily understand where you can afford a property you essentially just pick a price range that you can actually afford because those are things you can change depending on what you qualify for then you pick a house type that you'd ideally like to get in and then you understand what are the affordable parts of the market for you now if you don't like those parts of the market you can either downsize 
and then find other communities that you can potentially get into because things get more affordable. And overall, you can see now where the different benchmark prices are. For Detach, obviously, most expensive is in the West sector, for example. And as far as semi-detached goes, city center is the most expensive and so on and so forth. For all the sellers out there, um, if you're looking at year over year price gains and what you've potentially done, again, broken down by different uh, parts of the market, different segments, you can look at your area depending on the property type you own. And you can see the percentage gains that we have had year over year for that part of the market. So overall, the Calgary real estate market benchmark price has obviously come down. And we've seen that deviation away from inventory. So we were in March and April in high tensions where the sales was surpassing the amount of inventory that we had on the market. So not where we were selling every single listing that was coming on the market, but also eating up into our inventory. But now finally inventory has far surpassed the amount of sales happening. And that has resulted in the easing pressures in the benchmark price. My Looking at the past year's data um, for the last couple of years, this is just seasonal. So we can expect two to three months of easing. And then after that, into going into fall, prices will start picking back up as we get more and more rate cuts, especially on the more expensive sides of the market. And that is why the expensive part of the market is seeing more uh, price gains, more sales, is because it makes interest rate cuts makes a lot more difference on the more expensive part of the market versus the affordable part of the market. And that's where you get a lot of buyers then now finally being able to make that step and get those bigger homes because they didn't want to compromise uh, for say a townhouse or a semi-detached. And so that's where you're going to see a lot of increase in sales as we get more and more rate cuts. And also going back to the economy data that we had at the start of this video, as um, rate cuts are much, much needed now in our current environment, economy environment. So I would expect at least 50 basis points and additional by the end of the year, uh, by December, if not 75, uh, bringing us closer to the mid threes uh, by next year, hopefully. And then we would go from there. So hopefully that eases a lot of pressures because I know there's a lot of tensions in the market with people trying to use lines of credit or credit cards or whatever else to pay their mortgage. Um, we've seen the delinquencies rate go up, bankruptcies also starting to take back up more for businesses, but also personal bankruptcies also starting to take up. So it's a much required um, relief for the current environment that we are in. And I hope to see more buyers then come into the market once things get more affordable for them relative to where they are in their current situation. Thanks for sticking till the end of the video. Hopefully you found all this data useful. If you have any more questions, depending on your personal situation, definitely reach out my links in the description. I love having those calls. Um, even if it's just to advise you on what's the best move, what's the best timeline. If you're looking to make a move in the next three to six to nine months, it's best to start planning now so we can set you up with a game plan depending on your needs because everyone's needs different. This is just the overall market data for the all of Calgary, but depending on which community you're looking at, depending on your family's needs, if you're planning to have kids or if you're downsizing, it's all going to be very, very different. And I would love to help you with your situation. And it's the whole reason why I do what I do. And so definitely reach out. I would love to have that call, break that ice and start having those conversations with you. And until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care.